Okay, so I, I don't even remember where I saw this, and you got I just tried to, to look move it away as, as fast as I could. But um, supposedly in Europe. No, no, we're gonna talk about it on the show. Hold on, just hold oh, on. Oh, okay. All right, y'all ready? Let's start this. Sure. Here we go. All right, all right, all right, lid heads, we are back. Thank God we are back. We didn't know if we we're gonna make it or not after the uh, last get together that we had. But we're back with another episode of the Talking Lead Podcast, and we've got our Liberty Group. I like to call them now. We've got all the way up in Moscow, Idaho. <laughs> I said it right this time. Yeah, you're learning. I like it. Brian Keeney with Auckland Defense Solutions. Glad to be here again. And we're we're missing our our partner LOP. He couldn't make it. Uh, he's got some dire situations that he's got to take care of. Uh, something to do with the school board. <laughs> so he wasn't able to join us. He might jump in a little bit later. Who knows? We've also got joining us again from Great Falls, Montana. Montana. We've got James Balzac with Factory yeah. 47. And then we've got from the big, great state of Texas that almost screwed us uh, for some oh, electoral don't, votes don't, there. Don't put that on us. On, <laughs> we've got our good buddy Jared with 212 Training. What's up? Mr. Seagraves, welcome in. Glad to be here. Thanks a bunch. Yes, sir. Uh, and we may have a couple of other guests join in, so uh, be ready for some surprises. Who knows what's going to happen on this show today? So we were hoping, um, by scheduling this a few days after the election, that we would have a clear, decisive, de- you know, decisive winner, but that doesn't seem ha. to be the case. <laughs> yeah, ha! Uh, so who knows what's going to happen? Uh, there's lawsuits. Um, all kinds of things going on right now. Fraud. What else? There's there's still riots going on. I mean, people are still yeah, mad. Those haven't, those haven't really been in the news very much. They've been kind of covering all that up with, with the minute or second by second so-called count. Which that's the best thing that could happen. If they would just quit giving these babies the attention that they're so desperately seeking... Yeah, then they home. would quit. They would quit the rioting. They would stop. It was like nobody's listening to us. I guess we better stop. I saw something the other day where a they they were already shipping the bricks. Um, yeah, I caught that. I got yeah, I was going to say. The- I was going to say an interesting note on that. They were actively protesting and transitioning to riot before polls were closed and counts had even started coming no counts had even come in on the east coast and they were already actively in riot mode in a lot of cities so take that for what it is but it's pretty strong evidence that all sides of this thing had a pretty good idea of how this was going to turn out yeah just put out there so i don't know who the brick supplier is if they just like all right Somebody's going to be mad and somebody's going to want to throw a brick either side. Somebody's going to lose. Somebody's going to be mad and they just ship them out there or or, or what. But <laughs> So they they keep coming up in every show, right? So Dang. who benefits the most from these Bankers. writers? Bankers. <laughs> Bankers? Well, what about the media? Who owns they the media? Have, they don't. Yeah, well, that's there you go. Bankers. Yeah, bankers. Yep. I Banks think it's. Yep, yep. I think it's the construction companies because they're burning <laughs> down the window companies. I think they're behind all this. Who owns they the get to build it back. Huh? The glass companies. <laughs> yeah. Who owns them though? The banks. The banks. <laughs> <laughs> Bankers own everybody. They own it's a you. Vicious cycle. They own this Skype routine right now. They own the computer you're on. <laughs> they own your thoughts. That's that is true. That is true. But leadheads, in case you get <laughs> the opportunity. Own your thoughts. <laughs> Make sure you go back and listen to last episode, episode 371, where our guest was uh, the New York Times bestselling author Kyle Mills, who has been writing the uh, Vince Flynn Mitch Rapp series and his new book out called Total Power. And uh, it deals with 
if our power grids were targeted by domestic terrorists. Uh, so that that's going to be an interesting read. But we find out a lot more personally about uh, Kyle more than we do actually the book. So there's no spoilers, so you don't have to worry about any you know any spoilers of the book or anything like that. But it was a great interview with Kyle. Got to know him uh, quite personally. He's a great dude, and uh, we're looking forward to having him back on soon. So go check that episode out. We get a little break from all the the drama and whatnot that's going on in in our uh, country these days. But we're not going to let you forget about it on this episode because that's what we're going to talk about <laughs> <laughs> specifically. Uh, so let's let's get to the election. Um, I'm, everybody made predictions, and it's a lot tighter. I mean, I got to admit, it's a lot tighter than what I thought it was going to be. Yeah. I mean, yeah, at this I'm point like, in time. If, if you believe that. If you believe that. I, I agree with that. <laughs> if you believe that. I, well, uh, right. So I'm looking at CNN right now because what was that saying, James? Sun Tzu, know, know thyself, know thy enemy, need not fear a thousand battles. Sun Tzu, yeah. Yeah. So I, I always like to look at the enemy's uh, websites. Absolutely. So as of this recording on 11.5 at... 7 p.m. Central, they've got Biden at 253 and Trump at 213. And uh, So what changed? Because last I saw Biden was, what, 264? What what state? Oh, really? Finalized. Earlier it was 263 or 264. Well, it depends on which, it depends on which state you're looking at. Was that CNN you're talking about, too? Yeah, that I'm was, looking at CNN. Was, yeah. Yeah, uh, that was CNN earlier, I thought. Uh, but I just refreshed know. it. So, uh, Biden eyes, uh, let's see, maybe that's just an article and it's not a, a dynamic picture. This is actually uh, this something was... I wanted to talk about with you guys today The is the continued yeah. malfeasance that's... of the, of the media. And, uh, if you get on Google election results, uh, the search string is election space results, uh, pound, or hashtag election 2020, all one word, you'll come up with a, uh, a map. So here we've got an election map, and it's got the confirmed Trump states in dark red, yeah, Biden states in dark blue. There you and go. Then leads in pink and light blue. And 264 got, to 214. That's right. Now, now let's break this down a little bit because that's not the total number of electoral votes, right? Right. And so... And then if you scroll down on this page on Google, you'll see that um, it's got sort of soft reds and blues and then hard reds and hard blues. And it's calling uh, Arizona hard for Biden, dark blue, um, with only 90 percent reporting and a, a gap of less than two points. And if you go to Trump with... Um, Georgia, up until recently, um, he had a massive lead with a, a far higher amount reporting. And as we as we record this, it's forty nine point three to forty nine point four. The latest is that um, that there's going to be a recount, but there's a bunch of others like um, oh, and this is evolving a little bit. But basically, Trump, all of his are listed as as leads except Florida. And Biden has been, they've been flipping him over to hard blue. And this is what Jay would call uh, predictive programming, you know, getting you used to the idea of Biden having already won those states. But that 264 to 14 at the time we're, we're recording is anything but static. And so there's this really subtle, but when you start zooming in on it, awful um, uh, thing that they're doing here, like, where they're they're calling stuff hard for Biden and not at all for Trump, and they're making it look like Biden's got it in the bag. And I think that's sure. Perfect. And and this good. Uh, I'm sorry. This is what I've seen all day because we had this. We had news uh, on on the TV in the office all day with with customers coming in and out, and they would glance up there and go, "Man, damn, you know, it's over." They because when you see that 264. You think, well, there ain't a chance no in hope hell now. Yeah. 
Right. So, of course, depending on where you're 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 standing, you know, the the head thinks where the feet stand. Yeah. Um, but anyway, it I, I well, that's really why it surprises me that CNN is is I guess more accurately reporting at two fifty three to two thirteen. Uh. I would expect them to to have the two sixty four to two fourteen. Right. Uh, Fox had the two sixty four to two fourteen almost all day. Yeah. Well, but, you know, Fox has been just reprehensible in its coverage, you know, with calling Arizona so early and even those on the left are saying that they should take that back. Sure. Yeah, cuz they're at 90% and like you said, it's 50.3 to 48.4%, which 1,494 to 1,437 votes. So another 10% could um Sway that. Oh yeah, it's anybody's ball game right now. <clears throat> so, but what really gets me are the actions of the two parties. So, and the way that the reporting, I guess, maybe makes it seem this way too. But it, you know, with Trump going in and the lawsuits and you know the things like that, that gives me the impression that of a defeat. You know, that I'm defeated, kind of thing. Absolutely. Are y'all getting the same impression? You know, when you see this and hear this, that I did, I don't. I don't feel that way. I, uh, I, I, you know, I'm probably quite a bit younger than some of you guys, but I look back and I think re- elections in my lifetime, like Bush, would have been he would have conceded and been bailed already just because the media told him. Uh, Romney, uh, McCain, these guys are just they bail. The Trumps are Brooklyn brawlers, and that's a great put, point. To man. me, I see it as they're putting up a fight. They're like, "Oh hell no, this is fraudulent." There's all sorts of red flags going off here, and and if I'm defeated, then you're going to prove me I'm defeated, and then I'll concede like a gentleman. But you're not going to fraudulently have all this red flag shit, and I'm not going to call your bluff on it. So to me, I perceive it as no, 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 no. I'm I'm not going down without a fight, and yeah. that's that's how I perceive it, though. Yeah, that, that's that's a great point because. So many people in the past just roll over and, and they think that there's no pathway to prove or disprove what's happening. And, and that's that's a great point, James. Yeah, I was actually talking with one of my customers down in Texas about this this afternoon. And, uh, you know, political preference is somewhere around 50 percent genetic. And, um, you know, I'm I'm going to reach a little bit and say that in general, conservatives are rule followers and are generally fairly polite and um, liberals are more apt to break rules and I don't and don't mind getting impolite and uh, I'm and I don't say that with any real judgment like sometimes it's well it it's really good to be impolite and rude and sometimes it's good to be polite and sometimes it's good to follow the rules and sometimes they really need to be broken I think you're spot on, Brian. The only thing I'd like to point out, though, is liberal and conservative are ideologies, lifestyles. They're not uh, political affiliations. We've tied them that way the last 10, 15 years in our country, like forcefully. Um, But this like Trump movement, this Trump train that's been rolling that you've seen all this enthusiasm for. These are these aren't conservatives that are doing this. These are these are people that they're not you know, socialists or liberals by, by any means, but they're people that just love liberty and they're not, I mean, like I, I'd say I'm of the makeup that's not necessarily polite. Like, uh, if I think you're wrong, I'm blunt in telling you you're wrong. I'm not, I'm not a conservative by any stretch of the imagination, but I don't know that I've dem- voted for a Democrat in the last, you know, I don't think I've ever voted for one. Now that I think about it, but, uh, it just, you know, there's, a, I think there's a difference there. There's not just cause you're, you vote red doesn't make you a conservative. So I just want to point that out. No, you're, you're very right. And conservative might be the wrong word, but one way that I can put it maybe better is that people that are higher in trait order, uh, tend to swing more to the right. Conservative tend to be more about, you know, yeah. they're going like, to, they're not going to park across three parking spaces. They're going to be orderly about it. And that just feels better to them. Yep. And uh, artists and, you know, I, I happen to be really low in orderliness and very high in openness. Those people tend to, to, to lean liberal and they don't mind getting wild. And this is a, a this to me, it strikes me as a time where um, 
where conservatives could stand to get a little more rude or Republicans or whatever, whatever you want to call the group right now that it's in our interest to have Trump in the presidency. It's a good time to get rude and be a bit of a Karen about making sure that every damn vote gets counted and that these people in government that have purposely mixed in votes that were, you know, they're a big batch of ballots got apparently got pre postmarked or, you know, the late ballots were postmarked November 3rd and then shuffled in with the rest. I forget which state this was, but the attorney general apparently just came out saying they did that on purpose more or less. So, um, might be wrong on that. I don't have a direct source on it, but that's what this gentleman was telling me. And, um, so there's, there's clear evidence of, of, uh, fuckery afoot. And, um, and so making sure that we stamp our feet and get out in the streets if necessary, figuratively or literally, it's a big deal. Um, because, Absolutely. you know, by any means necessary is definitely the motto of the left right now. Absolutely. And I'm looking yeah. at Fox's website right now, too, and they've got the 264 to 214, which surprises me that they would <clears throat> they would go ahead and do that, too. Well, and, and honestly, just they're along the, the end of the media. Yeah, sure. They're all run by the same <laughs> by they <laughs> by the bankers. <laughs> but um, as far as the Senate goes, uh, so we yeah, got going that on, wrap. Or, there. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, James. Yeah. Well, I yeah, I, w- I wasn't sure how you were how we were going to do this tonight. So I I wasn't sure if we were going to go round table like we did last time and uh, in our recap and comparison to what our prediction was. So I was just going to say, you're about to go down a road that uh, pretty much encompasses most of my notes on tonight's episode by bringing up the Senate. So uh, carry on, but uh, no, I was just going to get the hammer, man. Yeah. You're on it. Go. I, yeah, I I was just going to point out like the Senate is, was personally to me, the far more important part of this whole election. Um, President's seat justices, that's what they do. That's the number one most important responsibility. And in the four years that we had Trump, the only permanent thing I can think of that actually got done was seating of justices. No bills got passed that are permanent. Everything has to go through both sides. And when your country's this divided, you have to have the House and you have to have the Senate or nothing is getting done. And it doesn't matter. I mean, so this election uh, is important to get the presidency. Absolutely. But it was far more important to retain the Senate first and foremost. Even if Trump gets seated and we didn't have the Senate, they can impeach him all the way through. You know, sure, that gives us Pence, but at the end of the day, they can wreak major havoc further than they could have before. They also anticipated a major gain in the House, giving more than the two-thirds they would need to cause even more problems, and they didn't get that. So even if they do pull off this coup, if you will, and get – get Biden in the presidency, retaining the Senate and chipping away at the House the way it, it has seemed to have gone, um, majorly limits what can be done. And we're looking at possibly four years of almost nothing getting done again, other than some pencil whipping, which scares everybody. But really, like this this sick feeling that a lot of people on our side probably have and the 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 fear that they have right now, I think it's, um, you know, it's time to calm down, take a deep breath, keep an eye on things. We need to be pissed as hell about potential fraud um, and, and really what's looking like total fraud. But as far as the overall outcome, I think we actually kicked major ass the other night. And also want to give a big shout out to the great state of Montana. Good job. <laughs> totally dominated. Uh, first Repu- Republican governor in 16 years. And we went right across the board. I can't be more proud. So that's uh, that's my thoughts on the Senate, though. We'll, we'll cycle back to the other stuff as we get there. Okay. Awesome. What about you, Brian? No, I think that's absolutely right. Um, I've got a real glass half full view on this, and I can see a way to um, to really kick the Democrats in the dick really hard over the next little bit here. Because if Biden comes in, um, which really means Harris— what can they actually do? And James was really early on this and I think wins the pool of exactly zero dollars that we contributed to this event. <laughs> but he, he wins all of it, I think, because if we keep the Senate, which it looks like we're going to, 
then all of the major presidential appointments have to get confirmed by the Senate. That means no Bernie Sanders as Secretary of Labor. Um, you've got, you know, no Pocahontas in the Treasury. You don't get any of that stuff. So what does he really have? And particularly with regard to Second Amendment stuff, there's no way he's getting an AW ban through. If he does a um, executive order, it could be challenged in the Supreme Court, which now really is not going to go his way. And um, so I'm seeing a real lame duck if he gets in from day one. And that actually sets us up super well for 2022 and 2024 to get Nikki Haley in the White House or somebody like her that's a good, decent person. Another, another caveat on that. Um, if you have a four-year president who doesn't retain the presidency, they are still eligible to run for the presidency. <laughs> I just would like to throw that on the record so it is published. You heard it here first. And also... Um, the squad picked up a member. So there's another member of the squad now, and uh, that does not bode well for the establishment Democrats. So there's probably going to be some really nasty infighting for the next two years because, uh, like, Schumer, like, it's no secret, um, AOC wants that spot. So I think you're going to see some nasty infighting, which might not work out well for the midterms, but... Yes, Biden and the presidency and our current situation as it appears of us retaining the Senate is great. More importantly, we need to make sure we retain that in two years. Otherwise, we are royally fucked. But um, but yes, right now it looks it looks very good. And with the way the numbers lie, because they don't have the, the big majority they were hoping to have, the whole pipe dream of court packing and all their other nonsense they kept coming up with all year and, and feeding the public – none of that can happen literally none of it not even the, the tax hikes that they were you know jacking off about so uh, all the threats i think there's there's a very nice silver lining here and a lot to be excited about and the presidency is actually a really really small part of the picture which is as it should be right and that Absolutely. so there's a lot good here and one, one, um, one more final thing on that sorry one more final thing just hit me uh, very rarely in American history has an, a second term president's party retained the presidency. So going eight years with Donald Trump would have been absolutely epic, could be absolutely epic, still might be absolutely epic. However, that puts us statistically and historically at a disadvantage for 2024. We have Supreme Court justices um, not very forecasted for vacancies in the next four years. Um, Byers being the oldest in 2024, he'd be 84 years old. Clarence Thomas would be 82, and uh, uh, Roberts would be 80, if I'm not mistaken. You have to check those, fact check me on those ages. So that puts 2024 at a at a much much 100% more important election at the presidential level than 2020. And so again, I think that there's major silver linings here. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, major yeah. silver linings. No, absolutely. And I really don't want to. I might have to. Uh, deafen myself with an ice pick if Kamala Harris is president because it'll just be too much screeching to deal with. Um, but that said, like like you said, I really don't want to see Kamala 2024 when the Republicans have almost no statistical shot at getting in. And so doing uh, from a tactical or sorry, from a strategic standpoint, we're just in really good shape and it is not bad. It is not terrible. Got it. I can't. I can't even say it that good. It is not. <laughs> we're not looking at a civil war if Biden gets in, assuming that we hold the Senate. And so, on the, with the long view in mind, you know, I can live with where we're at right now. I will be really unhappy about it, but I think I would be less happy in 2024 getting a Democrat House, Senate, and Kamala or whoever there. Would you and be more so, upset? Uh, were you more upset when Obama won versus if Biden wins this time? Oh, you're you're no. starting up some That's old. That's a tough one. Yeah. No, because I, they uh... they took control of everything when he took over, and they didn't do shit. Thank goodness. No, it, 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 exactly, man. I think Biden's a nothing burger, other than being extremely revolting. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's distasteful, but he's not dangerous. He doesn't have any teeth in this. There's nothing to be done. 
He this is not. This is not scary. It's frustrating. Yeah. So yeah. Obama. The Obama uh, election. Oh wait, was it was scary? It was uncertain. It was a sick feeling. It was holy shit. We just got our asses handed to us, and rightfully so for the car- crap we put up for several years before that. We deserved it. I get it. But it was scary because here was a guy who who could publicly speak. He he is a smart man, and he had yeah. he had a lot of evil plans. Um, and lucky for us, none of that transpired. But you're right. That was a scary time. This time around isn't scary because it's a bunch of bumbling idiots, puppets on strings, and they, they're drooling on themselves. They can't even tie their own shoes. So it's not scary. It's sickening and frustrating in the context of how it's going down. Yeah. Um, but we got a little that? cushion, but we've got a little cushion this time going in too with our justices and then with the, with the Senate. Absolutely. And going back to your fact check on the just, who's got the dog? No dog. That's bizarre. I was hearing it. I was wondering the same thing. I took care of that. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Stephen uh, Breyer, born 1938. He's 82. So he'd be uh, 86. And Clarence Thomas, uh, he's 72. Samuel Alito, 70. Sonia Sotomayor, 66. John Roberts is 65. Alina Kagan is 60. Brett Kavanaugh is 55. Neil Gorsuch, 53. Amy Barrett, yeah, 48. Yeah, but, thank, you for, thank you for that. Alito was the one. I, I think I said Robert, so I totally blew that. But, yes, there's a, there are more. The, the point was there's three that are going to be over the 80 mark in 2024. And, um, you know, under the under a Biden presidency, I, I think that uh, they, they might have learned their lesson with the Ginsburg thing. And I could see would buyers – Retiring? Would, would you? Think, I was going to say, would you? Would you think if, Buyer would retire if he's sooner than later to go if ahead he's and get a nomination? And believes in their cause, yes. If he's not, and you know, or he doesn't believe in their cause, then no. And like in Ginsburg's case, she totally believed in their cause, but I think she just had kind of this ego and chip on her shoulder and really didn't believe that Trump would win. And then when he won, you know, then it was okay. I got to outlive this presidency, and she damn and her, near did, almost did it, it too. Just did. <laughs> Oh well, yeah, she was tough as hell. But you know, yeah. I think I think they might have learned some lessons from that. And again, it'll probably decide on whether he believes in the cause or not. I mean, that's that's a choice he gets to make. So, yeah. well, but we're looking pretty good. I mean, Clarence Thomas only seventy two, and then Alito is only seventy, uh, and then Roberts he's a swing. He's not really liberal, liberal or conservative. Brett Kavanaugh fifty five. So I mean, they could out they, they outlast his presidency. So absolutely, yeah. But of course, anything could happen. You know. Who knows? Keith likes everything about the great outdoors. He's a lot like us. Whether we're bow hunting in the back country or plinking in the backyard, we want to enjoy each experience to the fullest. Keltec's 22 caliber P17 is Heath's go to pistol for a good time on the range, on the trail, and anywhere in between. Weighing in at only 14 ounces with a full magazine, its compact size makes it easy to conceal or tuck away in a small pack, pocket, or space. It comes out of the box ready with a fiber optic front sight, a threaded barrel, a Picatinny rail, and a price point for any budget. With three 16-round magazines, it's ready for hours of pure, unadulterated enjoyment. It's easy, it's affordable, it's accurate, and it's a damn sweet marvel of plinking innovation. The Keltec P-17. It's more bang for less buck. Oh, I got one more real turd in the punch bowl for you guys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, that is a bummer, but I'm just, well, I'm good at thinking about things that can happen. Um, the ATF, they, that one of the armchair, assuming that that the ATF is actually making moves against imported guns and braces and pistols, you know, turning them into NFA uh, items on the on the uh, on the latter there, and just banning import on the former. Um, you know, it looks like they're setting up to have a Biden presidency because you know, I, it's not like I think Trump loves guns and is really pro two A like you know, the bump stock ban, et cetera. Um, Mm -hmm. However, you know, the ATF with no, nobody at the reins pulling back on it, you know, all the, those pistols and, and imported weapons really become at risk. And so that is, that is a, not a small issue at the same time, 
lots of unfortunate boating accidents can happen. And uh, <laughs> the idea of people going around and getting their guns seized, pretty low odds in my book. And, and to just continue off that thought process, I think today I really was optimistic about whatever the outcome was, because when we retain the Senate, just like James started off with, there's some some buffer. And then when I hope that this entire political process, this cycle, has made people more aware of their rights, their liberty, maybe they'll pick up a constitution. Maybe this is on their brain a little bit more. But I keep going back to Virginia. I think I, I brought this up last episode that what we saw last year when the, at the state level when they tried to – they threatened to ram through um, all these assault weapons bans and things like that. The people literally stood up and said, nope, not going to enforce it. And if they try to get too radical under a, a Biden-Harris or, or Harris presidency, if, if you know, we're going to be truthful um, – I think that you would see states really standing up and saying, I don't think so. Not going to happen here. And, and when you look at those maps nationwide, county by county, the majority of the, the, the high population density areas, of course, are going to vote Democratic. The majority of the rest of the country is voting more Republican. And it really sucks, as you guys kind of alluded to, to really have to put ourselves into those two descriptive, those two adjectives, um, when there's so much middle ground and there's so much more to us as individuals, and you can have the whole two-party system argument all you want, but it's pretty ingrained. It's going to be really hard to change any of this. Um, but I really think with if you have in a huge attempt in the coming two to four years at a lot of government overreach people are going to pay more attention now especially if more truth starts to come out about what's happening in these the voting centers and i mean yeah i think you're right as, as divided as we are people that are have always been fairly centered or haven't really had a lot of buy-in to any of this, don't really care. They just live their lives and keep their heads in sand. A lot of them are being drawn in and, and forced into it because they don't have a choice. And we saw a lot of that with, with all the, the little mini Kings running around, uh, closing everybody's businesses, you know, this, this summer. Um, I don't think that'll did, happen again. I don't think. No, no, absolutely not. Stand because of that, that you, you've really seen these people get drawn into the fight that would never have otherwise been drawn in. Sure. And if you look at the governor races across the country, the governors that did this shit and really, really hammered it home that were up for election or whose seats were vacant, the Republicans are taking those seats. Uh, it happened here in Montana. It was a great example. Um, and it, and if I've went to several of these states, like outgoing governors' Facebook pages and the incoming governors' Facebook pages, and read the comments, and it's absolutely overwhelming. The comments have almost entirely to do with one issue, and it's it's the tyranny that has shut their businesses down, rippled their you know crippled their their daily lives. And I think would. It correlates to what you're saying that when you have people who, you know, just want to enjoy a good life and don't really care about politics are drawn into politics. Well, now they have to pick a side. Which side are they going to pick? The one that's trying to fight to take care of them or the one that's trying to, you know, ruin their life? Shut them down. Ruin yeah. their life. Right. Yeah. You're so much more articulate than I am, James. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. Let's uh, let's do our jack wagon train now. Uh, we've got several from the leadheads that I want to get to here. So that's, that's always easy, man, isn't it? It's so easy to find jack wagons. Gunny, roll that train in. Hey, Ralph, simplify, do or die, hold them high at eighth and I. It is time for the talking lead jack wagon of the week. So brace yourself, baby. All right, the train has stationed, and uh, you leadheads have been good. You heard my calls. You were slacking off on sending me your nominations for jack wagons and heroes. Still need to get more of those heroes in uh, from you guys, though. But uh, this first one comes to us from Leadhead Jason, Jason Farmer. He says, hi, Lefty. Though I would share this little gem with you for the jack wagon, I would like to nominate Jessica 
Yaniv to the jack wagon train. Jessica is self-proclaimed lesbian warrior princess and tech blogger. Jessica, who is actually a transgender man with uh, original twig and berries, <laughs> who entered the Canada Galaxy Women's Beauty Pageant. He did not disclose the fact that he was a biological man, and when he was disqualified for having a set of swinging nuts, he then decided to sue the pageant. That's right, someone who was neither a woman nor beautiful took such offense that he sued the pageant. Sad to see that such simple criteria to enter a beauty pageant is so difficult for some folks to understand. So, yeah, I can I can understand. A pageant that was made for women, uh, this, this person was mad because he lost. Or he got disqualified, <laughs> actually. Uh, okay, so there you go. Any comments from you guys on that one? Let me move on to the next one. <laughs> do we do we need to comment on that one? I don't think so. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I would think everybody's in agreement, and I especially like the the factory twig and berries comment. That was a nice touch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think they have beauty pageants specifically for transgender people. So I mean, yeah, why they're not in just, Thailand. Yeah, why not just enter that one? I don't I don't understand. All right. Yeah, and maybe we can <clears throat> maybe we can add some nuance here. Okay. Um, or maybe I can get in trouble with you guys. Sure. Um, I have an authority on this. N- well, kind of, I've known a, a, a fair number of, of, uh, uh, people of, well, having lived in California, this is something you come across and it strikes me that there's very two distinct groups. There are the people that feel they're in the wrong, wrong body and, uh, decide to live as the other sex, the best way they know how they work extremely hard to present as the sex that they're living in. You know, if it's a dude, he'll get the tits done and, you know, have a wig on and or grow his hair out and do his best to actually present as a woman. So you don't have to guess their gender, for example. Right. Like it's not hard. It's not hard to figure out when somebody introduces themselves as Sharon and they're six, four and built like me. Um, but they've got a set apple. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, uh, behind the machine shop that I used to or machine shop sales used machine supply there was a dude i forget his name now or well living as a woman who was a network engineer and uh he wore a purple freaking fedora and like i said had a massive set of of implants and a big (laughs) curly wig and he went by like sharon let's say and sharon she didn't you know she didn't there was no discussion of politics or nothing she just wanted to show you her burning man car which was this ridiculously huge Imagine if an Airstream trailer got infected by the alien and spawned a bunch of Medusa heads (laughs) spitting fire. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) It was awesome. And we never talked politics. It was just this dude living as a woman, going by Sharon or whatever. Sure. Those people, I don't know about you guys. I don't have any problem with them. They're not telling me what to do. You know, they're not making a thing. And then there's these, this other crowd that are the ones that are in the news and it seems to me there's very two distinct categories that there's the people trying to live their lives and then there's the crazy people trying to cause trouble. Yeah. Well, and, it's the uh, people that try to tell you what to do. You know, yep. they're trying to tell you what you need to do and how you need to live your life and I don't care who you are or what you identify as if you're taking that approach to it, I'm not going to take kindly to it. Yeah, yeah. Um so But I have no problem with, you know, somebody who chooses to live their life that way. That's their choice. You know, that's, yep. that's America. So, and, and the only other place where I take umbrage, and I bet you guys would as well, is when a dude decides he's a chick and wants to compete against women. Yeah. When he's, you know, massively different bone structure and, you know, 30. Major issues with that. that. Major yeah. issues. Yeah. And uh, so that's the only other place, you know, that's the what Joe Rogan gets in trouble for. And he makes a very convincing argument. But it's the same thing in wrestling or tennis or sprinting. You know, any time where there's a difference, when there's a women's, when there's a women's division for something, it's because they would lose if there was an all open division. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's true in almost every sport, and that doesn't make women less. They're the people that make us. So, like, they're already superheroes. And uh, that's those are the two areas where I think you know libertarian types or freedom loving types can really you know, draw some easy lines where it's not about disapproving of your lifestyle or whatever. It's just, please leave us the 
the yeah. hell alone. Our yeah. daughters alone. It's a good point. Yeah. All right, let's move on to our next one. This comes from Leadhead Chris B. And he's got a jack wagon and a Lead Force One hero for us. So uh, he says, I would like to nominate every sorry, unprepared asshole in the aftermath of Hurricane Zeta that's bitching and whining that the power company doesn't have their power back on on the second day after a freaking hurricane, and where is the government with food and water? He says he lives in Clark County, Alabama, where the eye came over at a Category 1 hurricane. He says, as for me and my family, we are lucky we had no structural damage to our home. We have a huge mess to clean up and a lot of down trees, but we are at home waiting patiently, cleaning up our mess, continuing with our daily lives because we prepared ahead of time with fuel, water, food, generator, and medical. So good on you, Chris. You, you listen to the show. <laughs> you were prepared, and uh, I'm glad that you guys weren't hurt. And... Uh, Hope everything's going better now. This is several days after that. I haven't really got an update from how things are looking down that way. Anything you guys know anything? Nobody cares. There was an election. <laughs> there there uh, was an election. At the, risk of, uh, at the risk of offending James, even firefighters need heroes. And, uh, you know, linemen, yep, they're the dudes. So, so well, James may be not admitted, but I think he's got a, a semi lob on for the linemen out there. Well, it's funny that you mentioned that no because his his Lead Force One hero nominee is I would like to nominate all the hardworking linemen working hard day and night to get my house uh, after they restore all the hospitals, nursing homes, primary business, and everyone that is way more important than me. As for me and my family, we will be just fine until then without government help because we were prepared for something that happens nearly every year and I can guarantee it will happen again. Very well said. And also, because I'm a professional shit stirrer, I have included a link <laughs> to a post that I made just to poke the bear on Facebook. So I'll look at that. Uh, I'll share that with you guys. But yes, very well yeah, said, just- Chris. And that just you know that just uh, mirrors everything that we preach and teach here on the show. So good on you. And yes, the the linemen, welcome to Lead Force One. All the linemen get a ride on Lead Force One. Shit, yeah, they get very little thanks, and that is a nasty, nasty job. It is always at like 3 in the morning, and uh, with sleet and frozen poles, and 14 kV, if they're lucky, of of really deadly voltage. And uh, yeah, my hat's off to them. Yeah, and, and, and pluck those people out of the Gulf Coast that are complaining about two days and, and put them in Puerto Rico or the Dominican Republic or Haiti or anywhere in the grid at every other week. And they may go months without it. So it just shows how shows you how spoiled we are. All of us. It sounds like they should move to California and out of Alabama. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Fire rolling blackouts. I mean, that's the thing. You pick your poison wherever you move. There's always something. You got earthquakes, you got fires, you got hurricanes, you got all kinds of crazy stuff. All right. This, uh, do you guys have any jack wagons that you want to throw out there before I do our next leadhead one? Well, I saw an interesting uh, little story today about the University of Virginia, I believe, that they were actually having meditative sessions for their students to get over election stress. Are you sure that wasn't the Air Force? <laughs> oh, that's rough. That's hard. <laughs> Any military branch today with their little stress cards. I mean, there's sensitivity training and, you know, time yeah, out. That's every branch. But now, you know, we've got our, our uh, universities, and they weren't the only one that are helping their young people and students overcome election stress. What the hell do you think is going to happen to these individuals when they get in the real world? We all know the answer to that. But So there's one of my contributions to Jack Wagon. Academic. Good one. There you go. All right, this next one comes to us from Leadhead E. Lindsay, and it's this guy's got a weird name. Wolves G. Malik Beasley. 
I guess he's a, a basketball player. I don't know. He's charged with pointing an assault rifle at a family on Parade of Homes tour. Uh, Minnesota Timberwolves. Here we go. He's a Minnesota Timberwolves guard. Malik Beasley was arrested after police say he pointed an assault rifle at a family of three that approached his rental home during a Parade of Homes tour in Minneapolis suburb of Plymouth. Beasley and his girlfriend, Montana Yo, are also facing drug charges womp, womp, womp. after the incident led to a search of their home and seizure of their nearly two pounds of that Mary Jane marijuana, according to a statement from Attorney General's office there. I would like to also add them to the jack wagon for using the term assault rifle. <laughs> the The reporter? Whoever wrote that. Jason Owens. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. Yahoo Sports. Yeah. Yeah. Well. You're not going to warp my brain. There you go. So, yes, Wolves G. Malik Beasley and your girlfriend, uh, Montana Yo. <laughs> Welcome to the Disgrace Jack Wagon. Disgrace <laughs> It was Malik. Malik. What did I say? Malik? Ma- Malik. You know what? He don't deserve to have his name said right, so he's Malik. It's Montana. It's not Montana either. It's Montana. <laughs> How dare her use that name and jack it all up like that? Yeah. I'm notorious. Um, Jared, in case you don't know, I'm notorious for um, saying people's names wrong. Well, I had really good training in it's kind of my. It's kind of my uh, forte. <laughs> I'm like, uh, you ever watch that show, Shit's Creek? Negative. Oh, it's hilarious. You got to watch that show. Um, the mom that's on that show, I can't remember her name, but uh, she's always mispronouncing words. It's funny. Do you guys have any any heroes you want to throw on there before we move on? My hero, my hero nomination is our wives that put up with us while while we're sitting here doing this. Oh yeah, <laughs> no shit. Mine won't be even home until like eleven o'clock. She don't know what's going on. <laughs> so we got one more jack wagon or i don't know something maybe you need to be aware of that um jared wants to bring to our attention so jared we'll we'll let you tell your story here yeah so i just came across the story the other day i don't know even where i saw it um that apparently this excessive heat wave that europe was seeing not very long ago um uncommonly high temperatures had men wearing dresses and skirts in both france and england as uh and and their excuse was the excessive heat so it's apparently setting a fashion trend in europe and they can keep that trend over there you you know they spill over to america you know all that that trendy stuff over there not this one a little bit scary looking. Go check it out at your own risk. What you see, you cannot unsee. Let's see. Ten European trends in men's fashion. I'm telling you, don't I'm go. It. What should a man wear to re- – how does – That's worse than the stuff that Brian was, you know, sending over a few shows ago. That you see. I was halfway inclined to get out there and campaign for the Lemon Party a little bit there. Oh, this yeah. Week, but- yep. That was it, the lemon party. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> the so these dresses, I mean, are they actual, like, women's dresses? Or are they, like, kilts? You know, because right. that's a manly right. thing. A kilt is a manly thing. And ask Sir Sean Connery. Oh, I'm sorry, he passed away. But uh, he was, you know, he wore kilts to black tie affairs and shit like that. He did, but we couldn't. Um, <laughs> But we couldn't. <laughs> Don't get it yourself, man. We, you couldn't pull that now, off. Now, Zach, Zach over at Ackles Defense, he wears kilts. Paul Marco wears... Yeah. Uh, let me spit my ice out. Paul Marco wears kilts. Brian might even pull that off, but, you know, he's bigger than we are, so... Yeah. Nah, I got, I got some Irish in me, but no Scottish, so... Uh, <laughs> Gotta have the calves no. for, the, for the kilt, you know? I just... I don't have the calves for that. I'm frightened that you've even done that calculation that far down the down the chain. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've 
I've thought about wearing a kilt every now and again. I've got a little Scottish you know, in me. I think you guys are missing the big one that's already hit the U.S., uh -oh. and that's the romper. The romper? The romper. What the hell's a romper? Oh, just type in the, yeah, men's romper. I'm, gonna, I'm about to scorch your corneas. Uh, here why it comes. Did you ever, why did you ever search that out, Brian? I didn't. It came to me. I unfortunately, oh. I read the news and uh, yeah, and you know, you talk about shit you can't unsee. It is, uh, <clears throat> yeah, truly terrifying. Zesty's men's romper. Mm. Okay. Why did you send that? Golly. Let's see. Ho! Oh, that is something that Adam Ranala would wear. <laughs> we should get him one. <laughs> Adam would wear that in a heartbeat, especially the uh, <laughs> the flowery one there. I could see him so wearing that. The freaking Halloween costume. <laughs> so a romper, uh, it's, it looks like a... Uh, I think the term a is... A jumpsuit. A jumpsuit with shorts. A shorts version of the jumpsuit. Yeah, when I hear romper, I think Charlie's Angels, but not Charlie's Angels. Yeah. Oh, you know, they they had some good rompers, didn't they? Those were yeah, full chick body in a rompers. Romper, no big deal, dude in a romper. I want to beat him to death. Well, <laughs> now for it. Yeah. Thanks. So a romper is a shirt and pants all in one. It's like a onesie. It's a onesie. It's a onesie, <laughs> but it's the shorts that put it over the edge. The shorts and the t-shirt. It's like. Yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> I'm gonna need, get the men's one go. piece bas uh, baseball themed romper. <laughs> See, here's the problem: is that I don't know oh. if you guys know this, but Lefty's a beautiful man, and he's starting to get non-ironically excited about the fashion that he could pull off with this. So <laughs> I'm I'm feeling like I've made a a, a terrible uh, mistake. Oh, horrible mistake showing me this, my friend. Um, yeah. But, we 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 get on something else here. <laughs> back to back to the uh, f the France thing. Uh, women across France assaulted for wearing skirts. Oh, that's women. Never mind. That's a wrong story. Forget yeah, that. Yeah, I thought that was. I did. You yeah, we, was, we, we, no, we shouldn't talk about emissaries from the religion of peace raping women that are not Muslim because it doesn't count. Um, so yeah, yeah. The are you guys familiar with the please don't rape me bracelets? No. no. So it's illegal to talk about this in a lot of parts of Europe, so it doesn't get out much. But uh, I don't know if this is all Islam, but some aspects of Islam say that basically it's not cheating on your wife and it's not rape if it's an infidel. And so women in um, uh, Sweden were dyeing their hair and uh, wearing bracelets saying, please don't rape me, to try and culturally educate the uh, new arrivals that it wasn't cool to rape women um, <laughs> oh if gosh. they were Muslim. And uh, there, this was also an epidemic in Germany and the organization, um, which was running afoul of the law a little bit back because of the, the statutes against Nazi behavior. Um, any sort of hate speech is really tightly controlled there. And um, the uh, organ women's organization is called uh, Dezebel uh, 121 or 120. And uh, it's the threshold of pain. And so the idea is we're going to scream until you guys are, you know, start hurting, your ears start hurting over this sex assault issue. And as uh, far as I can tell, it's it's not gotten better. And so that continent, you know, following up with the Vienna um, terrorist attack of the other day, I think it was Vienna, right? Yeah. The dude with the AK who was mowing people down. Yeah, Europe has a <clears throat> has an issue on its hands for how it wants its culture to be going forward. Well, I mean, it goes back to our last episode, and uh, you know, we were talking about the you know the the mass exodus there, and that you know Jay had pointed out that the the Muslims have really taken over the the culture, and, and it's forcing a lot of the the Christians and whatnot out. And you think that it's we, we should have on all our borders a big sign that says, "If you choose to enter this country." Here's some things we kind of frown upon. Murder, rape, <laughs> theft. I mean, there should be a big sign, just the big 
of the big top, you know, these are things you shouldn't do because they're illegal in this country. If you do them, womp, womp, womp. Yep. And it, it's interesting that politically, when we have anyone running that is Islamic or has a, is Muslim, um, their, their religion's not an issue. But Amy Barrett, her religion was an issue. You know, that's it's interesting. Well, they tried to make it an issue because they wanted to get their way. Sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. and at the risk of sounding like an apologist, you know, something like 98 or 99 percent of Catholics use birth control, even though it's not been. Obviously, that's a pretty frowny thing, or at least it used to be before this new pope. And uh, I've got some very dear friends who are who are Muslim and and uh, are fantastic people. And they take the good parts and they leave the bad. And so, you know, at the risk of beating a dead horse that everybody understands this, there's some really good folks who are who are Muslim. And then there are some absolute shit bags. And uh, same so thing just with like, same thing with Christians, too. You know, there's, sure. yep. there's some yep. great Christians. There's some shit bag Christians or people who yep. claim to be Christians. Yeah. Um, inevitably, man corrupts everything. So. That's not to say that I think, uh, you know, I, I don't disagree with Sam Harris's description of fundamentalist in Islam as the mother load of bad ideas. So this isn't me saying that it's all cool and, and great and everything. Just Right. Understood. Yeah, people. it's context. Yeah. It's yep. context. Yep. yep. Um, hey, one thing, this is a little bit off on a tangent or rolling back to uh, something, but uh, do you guys know who the actress Carrie Washington is? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I briefly saw her on, I think she was on Kimmel last night. We were holding clothes or something and the TV was on. She was, she had spoke at the, the DNC and um, she was basically stating that now she, you know, she heard we the people, we the people all her life. And that, you know, back the founders, when they wrote we the people, it was just a bunch of white guys that owned slaves. And she basically was trying to convey the fact that finally she felt like when she read or heard We the People, she actually felt included. Now, I'm a white guy that was raised in the middle of Texas and um, was raised by wonderful parents that taught me to love everybody. And I always can't see things from anybody else's perspective but i i really stewed on that for a while and i really wanted to understand where has anyone ever indicated to her or anyone else that they're not included in basic the basic bill of rights and i know i can't understand it like someone else might in somebody else's shoes because um you know it's all perspective in the world we're raised in but anyway that kind of rolling back to this this that's well, a you get another one of these uh, hollywood statement. elites you know that uh you know she's she, had every opportunity and i'm uh, not to she's say living she hasn't worked that, hard for it yeah she's she's living at the top percentage of of americans right now you know she's sure. living the life the dream she's a multi-millionaire you know she's famous she's beautiful you know she's got everything so for her to you know say something like that i don't I don't know. It's I, I don't it's for necessarily reasons, mean sure. to. Right. And I don't necessarily mean to, to try and um, to take any way from anything away from her message. But bringing race into the picture. And I heard so many demographics reported on as far as voting goes. And that's what really irritated me is we need to just be talking about Americans and politicians are focusing, focusing on the black vote and the Latino vote and all that. All that does is just draw more divisive between that's, us. It's, exactly, it's, more it's more divisive. divisive. That's all it is. And well, that really, really pisses me off. And maybe it shouldn't. Maybe I overreact when, when that kind of stirs up a fire in me. But all that does is divide Americans from Americans. And, and it trains us to see each other in just that way instead of building relationships. No, I agree. Anyway, I went off yeah. on a rant. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Brian. No, it's a bunch of good stuff there. And, uh, you know, I'll give you a real bright spot that despite, you know, that this election was a stinging rebuke to the identitarian left 
in that um, Trump, the only demographic that he didn't gain in um, was white males. Every other demographic he picked up, Asians, blacks, and again, I'm speaking of groups, but that's the language that they're using. Sure, sure. I and he, he picked up individuals and he treats Americans as individuals. And he talks straight to the black folks saying, hey, like, you've gotten screwed for, you know, forever with the Democrats. Can you do any worse? And, um, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. give me a try. And, uh, you know, in in contrast, Biden, you know, said on uh, um, Charlemagne the God's podcast or radio show or both, whatever it is, that uh, if you have to think about who to vote for, you ain't black. Mm -hmm. and think of think about the difference there. It's pretty staggering. And um, that and what was the song that he sang that Hillary Clinton also sang? Uh, they were they were bringing that up too. Oh, I don't. Yeah. Thank God I didn't have to hear Biden sing. Well, he wasn't. He didn't sing. He just he just read the words of the of the song. But it was some black African American type uh, song or something. I don't know. Oh yeah, they they were pretty gross in all that yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, all the pandering. You know, there's a, yeah. <clears throat> there's a book that's that's pretty classic among um, uh, black and BIPOC activists. Oh, and we finally have this new word that I forget if I've talked to, with you guys about that's black indigenous person of color. And I think that's an awesome word because we can have a conversation about the difference between Kamala Harris and Obama who have no legacy of slavery or long, you know, multi-generational oppression versus, you know, people that are descendants of slaves. And so there's this new word springing up that I think is really useful because it, it strips away from Obama and Harris this false authenticity that they've been trying to put forward that they really know, you know, deep in their cultural roots what others have suffered. And both of them, you know, had a lot of privilege on their hands. And I know I sound like a leftist right now, but it's just a different, it's a different kettle of fish. There's a book... Um, well, you're, you don't sound like a leftist, Brian. You're talking in truth. Period. Well, cool, man. Um, I like having the words to be able to suss out the... I got in real trouble for talking about that difference before that word um, when I was an employee somewhere. Um, isn't indigenous... Uh, when, you're, when you're talking of America, isn't indigenous uh, the American Indian? The Native, Native American... Yeah, or, I believe or it, any people that are original to that geog geographic area. Yeah, so that wouldn't be accurate if you're saying black indigenous Americans, right? I uh, well, you true. know, I, at at a certain point, well, there's a lot in common, and I might, yeah, you know, I might be inaccurate on this, but I think it rolls in Native Americans as well because they've been, you know, they've had the genocide, the forced sterilization, their kids getting taken away and put in American schools up through the 70s. I think actually even today there might be some conflicts over that. Mm -hmm. So it, it might be both of those groups together. I don't remember to be perfectly honest. Um, well, I'm not. But, I'm not faulting your statement or you know you bringing that word. I'm just you know I'm just analyzing. kind of breaking it. I'm analyzing Black Indigenous American, and to me that that screams a Native well, American who well, is no, also so, has a bloodline right. of. Um, but of black. But I think indigenous in itself would be Native Americans or the Inuits in Alaska or or the Aztecs in you know Central America. But black indigenous American meaning not African American, born a black individual born here in America, indigenous. Well, I'm in, not going to try term. to figure right, out. Brian? I'm not going to try to figure out what the fuck they mean by oh. you know, when they say this shit. <laughs> Just like, you know, when they start, you know, calling you know, with the assault rifles well, and shit like that, you know, to hell with that. But indigenous by itself, the definition is originating in and characteristic of a particular region or country. Native, right. often followed by two. Yeah, and, I think I've got it wrong here. It's black, comma, indigenous, comma, and people of color. Um, so I got but, a group oh, of those. So that's grammar is important. So that's a whole different ballgame. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So where where I'm going, though, is that there there are some, obviously, there are legitimate hor historical beefs um, by people of color, blacks, what, whatever the new words are, BIPOC. Um, 
and uh, I read one of, I like to know about people that aren't me. And so I read this book that's not, I got a lot of problems with it, but um, it's called Between the World and Me by ta Coates. And um, he talks about whiteness as kind of a state of being, not the color of your skin. And it's like a general sort of class of person where, you know, if I'm driving around in a BMW and I've got really nice clothes on, I am generally going to get treated different by people than if I look like I'm homeless. Think of it that way. And um, the the major beef that I have with his whole book about this thing of whiteness and the government owning people's bodies, which I occasionally use that language, is because the thing that I think he got majorly wrong is that he thinks that the beefs he has are only pertaining to black people. And I think those beefs are way wider. And I think it's an interesting book to read. Like I said, I do not agree with a lot of what's in it. Mm -hmm. But to loop back around to your observation, Jared, with this lady, Carrie Washington, was that Mm -hmm. her name? What, what, What my response would be is, awesome. Welcome to the party. We want you here. We want you as one of us, as one of the people. We want you to feel that you belong to this great nation and and its history that has rolled in all kinds of different people and um, that have all been treated badly, almost all treated really badly at one time or another, whether you've got Italian or Irish or, you know, African-American ancestry, you know, or you're from Russia, you know, basically everybody got treated like they were less than a person at one time or another as people came to this country. And so I'm really glad that this, that this lady feels like she's part of the American dream. That's awesome. Sure. So Carrie Washington was born January 31st, 1977 in the Bronx, New York city, New York, USA as Carrie Marissa Washington. Of course, she's an actress producer known for, she was in Django Unchained scandal, yeah. which I watched scandal. That's a good show. I liked it. Right. Uh, Save the Last Dance, uh, several other things. And, uh, and I'm not, I, w- I wasn't, I wasn't trying to. Nobody's taking you know, it that way. You're fine. Hammer on her it. or anything. I, I just thought it was an interesting statement. It was thought provoking. Yeah. And um, my initial reaction was, why did you ever think you weren't? But again, growing up in the Bronx, I was born in 77 in Temple, Texas. You know. So here, here's her. So she's the only child of a real estate agent father, Earl, and a mother, Valerie, who is a college professor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there is a theme. Mm-hmm. Okay. There you go. Yep. <laughs> she's a beta. She's a Phi Beta Kappa graduate of George Washington University's theater program. There. Okay. There you go. She double so majored in anthropology and sociology. <laughs> okay. How about that? How about that? Yeah. Yeah. You know, Jared, <laughs> what I hear is is your because I know you outside of the the radio or talking lead is that you're you're one of the the most good hearted people I know, and I can imagine your blood boiling at the outrage of somebody thinking that they were less than. You know, just because, and I, I don't want to make it sound like I'm pumping your tires, but you know, I I. I, you know, I, I wonder if it was sort of outrage on behalf of anybody that that wouldn't like how we want you. So, you know, you really do love people. And so um, I can understand that making your blood boil because you want everybody to feel loved in this country. And that's awesome. So more, I took more a, on, I took hold a on, step back. hold on, more on Kerry Washington. Her father is African-American. Uh, and her mother is of Jamaican ancestry, including African, English and Scottish. Her cousin, well, well, I, Millie Silva, ran to be New Jersey's lieutenant governor in 2013. Oh, wow. So, I mean, her family doesn't sound like they've had to struggle too much, but go ahead. Well, see, yeah, I made the assumption that I don't know what she went through in in her childhood and in her her adolescence. And, you know, I so I literally did not want to pass judgment and thought, well, you know, the more I thought about it, that's an interesting statement. But... I didn't go do my research like you just did, and it's amazing. Now how, she's also friends with Oprah Winfrey and Nicole Kidman. Well, of course. And here, sure. you know, here's the thing: this is what you know you need to know. She was ranked number sixty-five on Maxim Magazine's Hot One Hundred Women of 2014. There you go. <laughs> so, 
But you know, I, I like her as an talk- actress. I have no problem with her as an actress. Oh, she's But I'm sure awesome. politically we're not going to mesh. You know? No, we're <laughs> not going to mesh. But that's okay. Um, you know, I saw so, w- Brian was referring to this black, indigenous American, and, and we, we, we label these demographics, which just drives me crazy. Because yeah. if you were born here, you were an American. That's just the way I see it, unless you were born in Texas and you're a Texan. Sorry, no, that was a famous <laughs> plug. Um, Not all of us get to be born in Texas. No, <laughs> that's Robert. right. No. Um, a lot of them move saw, there. You know, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Stay out. No, I'm just kidding. So there was a, a picture on social media the, the other day of Char- Charlize Theron. And Charlize she's Theron? from South. Yeah, she's from South Africa, I believe. And it said... Why is she not African American? That's Sorry where the that dog again. Talk things come comes in, and yeah, she doesn't. And oh gosh, if you guys haven't watched the Old Guard yet, oh, it's great. Oh, I've watched it two or three times now, and I don't normally do that. And she is just really, really cool. And uh, so, yeah, no, she doesn't. She was in the Mad Max um, remake. Too. That's right. That's right. Very good. But, uh, you too. know, she's, she's got that history of, you know, white oppression that, you know, South Africa is a really tricky place to be from if you're white. Indeed. And, and so I bet she talks about it. I don't think many people know that she's from South Africa. And uh, she's born I, in B-E-N-O-N-I, Benoit. It's, it's in jo- Johannesburg in South Africa. Right. Yep. Yeah. She yep. was raised on a farm outside the city. Uh, she is of Afrikaner, Dutch, and some French, Huguenot, and German descent. The Afrikaner military figure uh, was her great uncle, Deny Theron. And I'm yep. sure by today's standards, if she was white in South Africa, she would have been and an occupier and you know we can get into all the politics and all that but that that's that's where we lose sight of each other and that's what always drives me crazy is with the labels and the demographics and and they just drive it into so is she an american kids. citizen though i don't i don't, I don't know. know i think she's probably not an american she may be but i don't know you're you're pounding out that research right now man <laughs> well nude pictures of her taken in 1994 <laughs> appeared in the may 1990 <laughs> issue of playboy magazine <laughs> <laughs> so after this podcast people are going to be yeah yeah right. <laughs> that's the only thing they're getting out of this whole podcast is <laughs> nude photos of charlie's oh okay oh. but it, it's just the lens of media and perception of people today is so divisive period and you know i see some of my former students and again i taught junior high and they're they're now you know in their early 20s and they're getting married and they're starting families and i see some of their political posts and i just think man you know 10 years ago you saw people for people what has happened and it's it's just disheartening. And that's what's happening in our politics and, and everyday life here, and it's just infuriating. Well, well we're going to get out of this positive. this negative Nancy attitude here. We're going to talk positive. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, no, I think the important thing to understand is that that's straight out of post-Marxism. That is a neo-Marxist. That's a feature, not a bug. And so Absolutely. you're right to be infuriated by it. But instead of cutting across class lines, they're trying to cut across race lines. And so <clears throat> you're right to be outraged by it. And uh, yeah, it's terrible. And it that's another thing to be happy about with this election is it seems to have been dealt a major defeat. And the Democrats are learning that they will not win using that stuff. And so a real there's a real shot at a, re- a return to some normalcy here and... I really hope that this election just tempers everything down a little bit. And that would be another upside, um, however I don't want it, of a Biden victory is that those folks would ratchet down just a little bit. And even a a 5% ratcheting down would make our lives a lot easier. My only concern is that the media and their manipulative, manipulative message would basically 
twist this into the country has rejected Trump and his white supremacy uh, machine, and uh, you know they 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 could and probably would twist this. But to your point, Brian, I think the American people are are really seeing through all this at a at a at a higher percentage and, and rate than we can even identify because the media keeps trying to drive the nail in the coffin. Yeah, but I get that. But there's already articles out on far left news sites about that this is a rejection by the American people of this strategy and something else needs to be done. You know, Cenk Uger from the Young Turks was just irate and it was so it's worth tracking down and watching about him talking about there's a bunch of expletives but him saying how bad the democrats suck at doing this and how bad the media is sucking and it needs to get fixed and so uh you know i i think they're taking this one to heart and uh that's my hope and that's just probably me being glass half full but but it's my hope that they'll ratchet it down the Fiocchi family has been producing high-quality ammunition since 1876. In 2020, Fiocchi is launching a full line of premium products, everything from self and home defense to the long-range categories. The Fiocchi Blue Guardian line will feature specially tuned products specifically for home and self-defense, featuring lead-free technology and the only NATO-certified zero-pollution primer in the world. Fiocchi is a proud sponsor of the Talking Lead Podcast and the Leadhead Brigade. Fiocchi trains... Yoki protects. I want to know something. How do you have so much time to read? Because I know what your days are like. <laughs> he talks well, a lot to people that fill yeah, him in. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's there's a lot of time where I can listen. And so, thank you. But yeah, I, I listen to Tim Bool and Ben Shapiro and uh, Talking a bunch of other Good talking later. Yeah. And, uh, people, I mean, that's I, one of the great things about, you know, the podcasting is, you know, because I do a lot of that too. I don't have time to sit down and read and, you know, go to these websites and do all that is, you know, and even, even listening on, you know, just radio too. You know, the radio, yep. I think radio has probably picked up a lot of popularity here uh, recently too um, from podcasts because people are getting more into listening than to, you know, reading type stuff but but it's a fun game like if you guys want to check out the difference between so my morning you know while i'm still in bed i'm looking at google news zero hedge and the daily wires feeds com and comparing all of them and then i'll look at what tim pool and a few other people have put out on tw on twitter and when you overlay all of those you you get to see what everybody's spin is and nobody's, everybody's got their angle. And so that, to me, has always been a really fun game. And uh, it's been a, a somewhat crazy-making game, you know, the last year or so, just watching these fuckers lie. Um, but it also becomes very obvious when they're lying, and that's pretty useful. And that's kind of, well, their mouths are open is a good way to tell. Um, so, yeah. So Zero Hedge, what is that? Oh, okay. Tell our well, listeners what that one. is. Yeah, Zero Hedge is kind of a um, a more sane Alex Jones, but it's it's kind of out there. But they're right a lot, and uh, just um, there's a particular um, blogger on there that goes by Tyler Durden, like from uh, Fight Club, and they just aggregate really good stories and news and stories from Ron Paul and gosh, they had Glenn. Uh, oh gosh. The guy who broke all the Snowden stuff, Greenwall, Green something. Um, mm -hmm. Like if you just hop on there right now, they have, they've got. Um, why does one article is why does Biden have so many more votes than Democrat senators in read swing the states? One, read the one before that. <laughs> uh, we'll get fucking torn apart again in 2022. Democrats, Democrats livid in leaked caucus call after crushing election losses. Don't say socialism ever again. It's stuff like that. With a picture and of Nancy so, Pelosi. Yeah. With her man. Yeah. Yeah. So they're pretty good. And then lourockwell.com is another really good one. And um, that's more of an anarchist. Well, they're, 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 their line is anti state, anti war, pro market. So leave me the fuck alone and let me make dollars. And, and, and libertarian. You know, 
they're beyond libertarian. Libertarians still vote, right? And so, you know, that's you're inside the system. These guys are outside the system. Gotcha. Um, I'll so, add those to my reading yeah, list. They're pretty good. Yeah. So anyway, those crossing all those together, you can see, boy, yeah, it's pretty remarkable what you see. Yeah. So, Every time I talk to Brian, it's like going to class somehow. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's why we love having him on the show. That's right. So lots I think I think the jokes, point of the of yeah I think the point of the show today is that you know either way that the election turns out it's not going to be gloom and doom you know there's 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 positives in this that we can take away from it it's not the end of the world it's not the end of our uh, republic our democratic republic would that be accurate. Yeah, I- Totally. I was really worried about a civil war kicking off pretty quick here. And uh, I think that that we've got a real chance for eking out, you know, another few years of 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 the states holding together. And that's great. I'll take it. Um, That said, everybody should be righteously pissed about the election fraud going on. So that is what we really need to focus on. Yeah, definitely. Yep. Yep. Because that has jeopardized our our country's. You know, that's one of the great things about our country is the the voting system that we have in place. And with the amount of fraud that has and, – and it's happened in the past. You know, we've all we – we're all aware of that, and we've mentioned it in the other shows. But uh, the, the amount and the extent that it uh, apparently has gone to this election is – it's just – it's horrid. You know, it's – yeah, I, I'm not so sure that this this level hasn't been occurring for a long time. The American people just haven't been interested in it because things have been so good. Um, I think that if everyone would really take time to educate yourself on this document, this Constitution, that really lays out the government's role and the procedural um the procedures of our elections and and if you take time to not just read things once but read it multiple times and dive in and try to understand the why behind it which will take some time take some effort but it's important because it hasn't been taught in so long and i sound like a broken record with that but and i'm even talking to myself i i need to understand it better and look at the viewpoints there's there's going to be more and more um, in the news about the electoral college and and how it needs to be um, done away with, and we need to just go off the popular vote. There's dangers, so many dangers there, and the founders understood this. And take the time to educate yourself, please. I saw a good video the other day. I don't remember who posted it, um, but it was a real just. I don't know the word I want to use, but it was it was very. Uh, quick, easy to understand breakdown of what the electoral college is and how it works and how our system works and that it's not, you know, popular vote and why we, why it was set up that way. Um, you know, basically mob rules is what it's preventing. And, um, you know, and it, it helped me because I kind of, you know, I needed to be re-educated on it myself. So, I sat down and I watched this video, and I don't know if it was Paul Markle that posted it, or maybe it was League of Pirates. I can't remember who who posted it, but uh, it was a very good, uh, just quick and concise of what the you know our voting system is, how it works. Uh, and I mean, if they had that video in in just our, our our schools, just that alone would help tremendous. Absolutely, you know. As, as crazy as this sounds, I used to show, um, they used to call it CNN Student News, but it's now called CNN 10. And you say CNN and you think, oh, you know, incredibly biased, left, left-leaning. left It really wasn't. And it's a 10-minute video that, that we used to show in the little study period that we'd have in class. My wife is still in education. She, she still shows this. And they would, it, at election time or any major world event they would really dive into just facts and they just did one the other day on the electoral college 
um, you can go back at CNN 10 and find that. And it, it, we showed it to our kids here at home and because my wife had showed it in class. It was very informative and not really biased, in my opinion. So mm-hmm. lots of little quick resources out there. Yeah, and if you just search in your put in your search engine, what whatever you use, why the Electoral College is necessary, you'll find right. some, some good stuff there. And you can even Google arguments against the Electoral College and – and sure. get both sides. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's super important to do that. Yep, absolutely. So uh, any parting, parting thoughts for our lead heads um, as we still don't have a clear, concise leader of the free world yet? Take this time to educate yourself and understand what's going on and question everything from any, any outlet that you get your information from. And Brian's strategy is phenomenal is overlay everything and, and figure out who's skewing information in which direction and educate, educate, educate yourself. Brian. Um, yeah, I think I agree very strongly with just about everything, uh, Jared said there. And I think, um, taking a good look at what your kids are being taught right now in school I do not think that schools are the friends of children right now, at least not on a a general national level. And um, there has been a conscious effort to make shitty citizens of us all. You you know, they got rid of civics and all the rest and Western civilization. And, you know, that's been on purpose. They want an uneducated voting public. And so I'm basically just harping on what what Jared was talking about, but, you know, the Constitution is written in extremely plain English. It is not hard to read. Like, Declaration of Independence, I've been breaking it down with my kids, and we spent half an hour on the first couple sentences. It's very dense. Um, And uh, the Constitution is more like a specification or a rule book, and there's some real gold in it, just like what Jared said. Like, look at the difference between how the Army is funded versus the Navy. And then think about the consequences of that. It's a big deal. So, yeah, um, that would be my advice for those interested in in uh, taking some steps forward. And um, and also just a bunch of deep breaths and not too much uh, looking at the news, despite what I just told you guys I do with myself. And because, uh, boy, you know, other than, you know, staying on top of the election fraud, too much news right now is is a little bit toxic, so it is. advise and people to take care of themselves. This is a good time to focus on yourself, your family, um, you know, your career, whatever that may be. This is a good time to start focusing on that and uh, keep pushing towards your goals, your aspirations. Yeah. You know, don't get discouraged by this. Um, just keep pushing forward. Yeah, I guess – that, that just jogged my memory, you know, drug and alcohol use is way, way up. Mm. And uh, thinking about, you know, just doing a little checking with yourself. And <laughs> As I'm sitting here drinking not, uh, not, not talking about pineapple it, flavored vodka. Whatsoever, but, but it, <laughs> you know, now that, now that the crisis appears to be kind of ramping down, it might be a good time to think about tapering usage of some self-medication. Um, and, uh, yeah. Nothing and, wrong and, with a little know, libation, just, libation every now and again. Nothing wrong with um, it. No. Just going over moderation. As Rogan says, all things in moderation, including moderation. I think that's sound advice. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, but screw and, his, you know, this, screw this his all, sober October, though, you know. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> and this, you know, talking with you guys and just thinking about everything that's going on right now, it's – it's really so important to think about our daily contact with people. And I I very much believe that we have purpose and I very much believe that our purpose is, is, um, how should I say predetermined? We are here for a specific purpose. and, And I really feel like we can fulfill that each day with every single contact we make with another person. And, and I don't care if, if they, are if you're the most right-leaning individual in the world and they're the most left or vice versa, we have to see each other as people. We have to be able to disagree. We have to be able to discuss these things and still have a healthy respect. And that's very, very difficult to do 
But I think that's got to be one thing that, that we need to prioritize. Now, I'm not saying you can always appease everybody and there's not a time to stand Nor should up. you try to. No, and, and that's not my point. But um, there's, we have so much more in common than we do that sets us apart. And I think we have to remember that. But there are enemies out there that want to tear this country down, and we have to identify that, and we have to squash they, it. They. They. China. They. China is they. The bankers, according to James. The great global reset. It's a good thing to start searching for. I'm starting to think it's a real thing. So uh, yeah. I think I have another boogeyman for you in another episode, Marty. Okay. I was I was gonna say that you know when you were talking about you've been doing sitting down with your kids and you know been going over the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. I think we maybe we should do that on the show. I think that'd be great though. I'm not sure I'm skilled enough to really do it for adults, but we can probably get somebody in here who can do any a better job. Well, um, and for me, that would that would be perfect for me if you could keep it on your you know your kids level <laughs> so, to, <laughs> to help me. And, understand. and we we need. Yeah, we need to explore that because we need to be able to combat the the entire community that says it's a document that was written for you know a different age, a different country, and it needs to be revised. And, and we need to really dig in and combat that. Yeah. Well, and and or talk about hey, yeah, you know, I I actually take a a different view or the uh, validity. But- but it's nuanced. Oh, the validity, yeah, I, I know what you mean that they're trying to marginalize it. But they knocked, you know, they knocked the shine off it. They did the equivalent of taking a brand new five thousand dollar nineteen eleven, and thirty seconds after taking it out of the box, they rubbed it in some gravel by putting the the, the bill of rights in there. And so they had meant for us to keep after it and to keep evolving it. And the problem is that our government sucks and uh, that they haven't done a good job with that and have filled it with, you know, not many of the amendments have been have been useful. Um, but hopefully if we get the wisdom of people that uh, some more wise people in to actually make some changes, they, they were not opposed to that. But I Thank understand you the point you're making. And speaking of <laughs> and speaking of wisdom. Speaking of wisdom, we've got some student of the gun wisdom that has just joined us. What's up, Jared? Ladies and gentlemen, it's Lil Fedor, Jared Markle. What's up, my friends? Hey, Hey, better late than never, right? Yeah, that's what they say. (laughs) Well, I mean, I could could put an exception in there. (laughs) I think all of us on this call could think of one exception. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, at least one, at least one. So, I mean, we, we're glad you could join us, but we're getting ready to wrap up here. But uh, you missed a great conversation. Uh, we've talked a little bit about uh, everything. everything. Yeah, well, you were, uh, you were telling me who, the, who your hosts, your co-hosts were going to be, and I knew it was going to be a great conversation. I wish I could have made it a little earlier. Well, we'll do it again. You can, you can hop on the next one with us uh, that we do. But it's good that you joined me because uh, we want to thank all our sponsors of the Talking Lead podcast. Uh, go go. Th- Show Keltec Weapons some love. Go show Fioki Ammo some love. Modern Spartan Systems. Fractory 47. 1776 United. Um, Occam Defense Solutions. Oh, yeah, those guys. You know, the 1775. Who's that? Uh, nah, they're a bunch of nerds. No, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> they're a bunch of nerds. And then. The best kind of nerds. I've mentioned on some, some episodes earlier that we're going to be joining the Full 30 Network. And we just happen to have the CEO of the Full 30 Network here with us, Jared Markle. It's, it's Jared. And, uh, yeah, dude, I'm, I'm glad to have you on there. And my, my child is protesting me right now. But glad to have you joining us on the Full 30 Network. We've made a lot of changes in the last five months since I really joined the team. And uh, changes for the better. And uh, I'm excited to get you on there and see what you got to say about it. Yeah, man. Uh, we're excited to do it. Uh, you and I are in the process of getting that page set up, that site set up on Full 30. And once we get that set up, we're going to have a wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, hell of a giveaway that we're going to yeah. be running. Uh, we're lining up, very excited. lining up all the, uh, the companies with the prizes. It's shaping up to look pretty damn good. I don't think anybody's going to be disappointed with... Uh, with the prize packages and, and we're looking at multiple winners here, not just one 
So it's it's going to be pretty awesome. So, Jared, I got to understand something. Why would you ever want to compete against YouTube? I mean, you can get anything you want on there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I, <laughs> I uh, for those of you that don't pick up sarcasm, but the, <laughs> so uh, believe it or not, for some reason, I like to be punished, apparently. And uh, if you watch any of my the fights that I had when I was a professional fighter, everybody, every one of my opponents was bigger than me. <laughs> and so maybe I just like it. I don't know. But I think that uh, with Full 30, we can definitely serve the industry. And we're taking on a Goliath, and we need everybody's support. Well, that's where I'm going, is that what what Full 30 really needs... Full 30 can be our own utopia of gun videos that have expletives in them and marketing for products and the ability to say, hey, what you're doing and to express political beliefs and not worry about getting censored. And so people really ought to go over and get a Full 30 account and start actually just start interacting over there. We need to stop as much as I was just talking about looking at mainstream news Um the only reason I look at it is to see what the enemy is doing. And unfortunately, they're getting ad revenue by me going and visiting that site. Mm -hmm. And so when you're going and doing your gun nerd video looking, really important to go over to Full 30 first and see if you can find the content there, get them the ad revenue. That lets them grow. And, uh, you know, that's a, a really big deal. And so, you know, you, you leadheads out there, I'd be very grateful. We're going to start posting um, our content there very soon. We're working out the final kinks there, and we're definitely going to be posting stuff there that you can't get elsewhere. And so we really believe in Full 30 and and hope that you guys can, can move over to it and um, help yourselves out by helping them out. And I really appreciate that. And I know that we've got people here listening that have seen Full 30 in the past. They've been there. They've used it. We just pushed out a huge update last Friday. If you haven't been there since then, go there. Use the platform. Um, there's a lot of stuff that's changed. And if you're a producer and you're not on Full 30 yet and you want a channel, we've opened it up to everybody that wants to be a producer because we totally believe in the freedom of speech, the First Amendment, Second Amendment. We believe that you know most people are on board with the second amendment protecting the first amendment but we kind of flipped that on its uh, uh we flipped it on its side and we said well yeah but also the first amendment actually protects the second amendment because if you can't gather together and talk about what you want to talk about then it doesn't matter when it gets to needing to use the second amendment can't have and one so, without the other yep yep so that's what full 30 is now it's you you can share your voice uncensored as long as you're doing you know as long as it's legal and and we can host it, then we're going to let it happen. Very cool. And we're excited to become a part of that. And like I said, Leadheads, we're going to, we're going to have a big giveaway celebration. Uh, and you guys aren't going to be disappointed. And that's coming soon. And once we get all the details on that, we first got to get the site up when we're working on that. It's, it's coming. Uh, the podcasts are going to be posted there. You're going to be able to go there and listen to all our podcasts. Uh, and then once we get that flowing, then maybe I'm not so I won't be so jaded. You know, YouTube kind of turned me da turned me away from from doing the uh, the gun videos, firearm videos, gear videos that I used to do. Uh, so I see us kicking that back up again too. So Wait. good stuff coming from Talking Lead Full Thirty and then Occam Defense. It sounds like too. I, I wasn't aware that you're going to be joining on there, Brian. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, they they're like Jared said, they're letting everybody in now. <laughs> I was just about to say there's proof for you. <laughs> <laughs> They'll let anybody on that. I no, might but it's change I my mean, mind. It's a really different platform from what it was a couple of years ago or even a few months ago. So Jared's made a bunch of changes and um I know in the past it might not have met people's needs super well, but it really I think there's a good good reason to get behind it, push it and um and we can get it up on its own leg, or it's on its own legs now, but we can really help it grow and pull it away. It really needs a surge of, of, of subscribers, so we need you lead heads yep. to go out, subscribe to the Full 30 Network. Uh, you're going to find several things there that you love, and if you've been watching stuff on YouTube and it's on Full 30, Nick's YouTube, start watching it on Full 30 exclusively. Because I want to I wanna eventually just drop YouTube. I just yeah, big time, big time. Just drop it completely. 
yep. in order to make that a possibility because YouTube right now, it does help producers and it does help uh, companies in the industry in order to make it possible for everybody to be able to drop YouTube and stop giving money to people who hate us. We've got to be able to, you know, we have the technology. We, we, like I said, we just updated it. And I do have to make a correction that Brian said that I've made a lot of changes. I'm a mere facilitator. The dev team has taken the brunt of the pressure on this. And uh, I'm very impressed at their performance and their ability to turn the stuff. They essentially rebuilt the entire thing in a period of six months. And it's, it's been very impressive. But in order to be able to compete with YouTube, both as producers, you know, the full th- is that true? She, 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 knows. Concurs. she knows how it is. Yeah, mm-hmm. both as, as producers and as a company, we've got to be able to um, to make the experience for you guys, the producers, and then the users that are watching the stuff. We have to be able to make the experience comparable or better than YouTube. Yep, and you guys are doing a very good job of that. So uh, more to come on that. We'll get Jared on when we uh, make the big announcement for the giveaway and the launch of Talking Lead's uh, Full 30 site. Um so any any we did our parting words right we already did that right so you threw me off when you jumped on there Jared I think that oh was, dang I jumped on after you did your parting words uh yeah we were doing our our parting words our final thoughts uh so Man. just just real quick give us your uh your thoughts on you know we don't have a clear decisive commander in chief yet um, give us your idea on what's going on there your thoughts. Um, it- my opinion on this is that it's all purposeful. None of this is an accident. Everybody knew what was going to happen. Um, you know, the, I think that the best possible scenario we could have had was to have a decisive win quickly, uh, either way, e- w- with either candidate. However, that didn't happen. And so my opinion is that what we're doing right now is the worst possible scenario because it uh, doesn't matter what happens somebody's going to be mad. 50% of the country is going to be mad at the outcome. Yeah. But like I said, I, I believe that, and call me a conspiracy theorist. I don't care. I, I believe that it's all, it's all, it's all meant to be the way it is. Nothing was an accident. Very good. So, uh, student of the gun, our listeners, uh, I'm sure most of our listeners are familiar with you guys. Uh, Paul, your, your dad, uh, does a great job with that podcast, that show. And of course you produce that. You've been doing that for years now. Uh, if you haven't gone over to listen to Student of the Gun yet, Jared, tell them where they can go check out Student of the Gun. Super easy. Go to studentofthegun.com, and everything is there on that site. You can listen on all the podcast players. We're on demand everywhere. We've got the videos as well, YouTube, obviously Full 30, um, all those places. So wherever you want to consume the content, that's where it is. Very good. And then, Jared, tell them about our AK class we got coming up in January. Yeah, man, really looking forward to the Talking Lead 212 AK Concepts class. It's a two-day class at Royal Range USA. Super excited to be uh, there for the first time. It's a phenomenal location. Nashville, Tennessee. That's going to be February. Nashville, Tennessee. It's going to be February 20th and 21st. Yeah, and you can sign up at 212traininggroup.com or 212 Firearms Training. It's going to take you to the same place, and uh, it's going to be a – a great two-day class. We're going to have lots of good stuff to uh, to give away. We're going to have some friendly competitions and uh, going to be bringing some HSP micro ch- chest rigs, a couple uh, of def lights. I want one of those. Um, oh, yeah. I, I, I think I could hook you up. And, I got uh, to look great good time. for the class, man. I got to be running some some – some high speed gear. Some high speed I gear. I can't be huh? t- have magazines tucked in my back pocket and my front shirt pocket <laughs> running running this well, you, course. You may be rolling that way in your truck though, so <laughs> but yeah, it's gonna be a great time. Every, every it is. Time, You're gonna get uh, more out of this class than your normal, you know, just just training course. Uh, like Jared said, we're gonna have giveaways. Uh, we're gonna have swag. Each each participant that signs up, you're gonna get a one of the new Factory 47 Talking Lead AK Corner T-shirts. We're going to include one of those. It's going to be a limited edition one of those too. So that's going to be that's going to be cool. Uh, but we're, there are going to be personalities there as well. Brian's going to try his damnedest to be there from Occam Defense Solution. He's going to bring 
uh, some 1775s for you guys to try out and shoot. Of course, he'll have his uh, his credit card reader ready to go for you to <laughs> heck yeah <laughs> to go ahead and, and buy a few while you're there. Uh, maybe you even a full sorry. maybe even a full auto one. And yep. there's there's talk of a couple other personalities being there. Um, big ones. Yeah, really oh, big. it's going to be a great time, man. That's yeah. that's the best part about all this is the the people that you meet. Um, and, and these courses and these trainings are, are life, they become lifelong friends and you develop a tremendous network. So yeah. it's just a great time all the way around, man. And, and we're going to shoot some guns. And the most important thing is you're going to, you're going to learn how to better operate your AK 47, your AK 47, baby. That's right. That's right. So we're looking forward to that, but you can go ahead and sign up now. We've only got 20 slots, uh, do it before they fill up. Yeah, and they're going to fill fast. We've already got people jumping in. So uh, mark your calendars and, and get over there and order your ammo and, and sign up. Yeah, and Looking if, forward to if it. If you need ammo, contact Royal Range USA. They've got ammo. Uh, get it while you can. They'll they'll hold it for you for the class. That way you, you're guaranteed you know you're going to have the ammo for the class. Uh, so go ahead and contact them. Uh, but you're more than welcome to bring your own ammo. As long as it's not some crazy ass going to fuck up their range shit <laughs> it's gonna be a little hard to find now anyway all right guys yeah, it's gonna be a great time well one wonderful show today tonight thank you for joining us james had to drop off so uh, go show james some love let him know how much you appreciate him being on and uh the factory 47.com uh check them out 212 training group uh jerry gave you their website there go check them out of course occam defense solutions uh, Brian uh, has got the social media set up as well, the Instagrams. He does a lot of posting on Instagrams. I really love it because he shows you kind of behind the scenes there, the manufacturing process and things that they're doing there. So he's got nothing to hide, high quality, yeah. high quality manufacturing is, going on there. And it's no, no fluffy posts. It's all badass builds, man. Yep. It's great stuff. Yeah, I wish I had a high-class marketing department to do all those fluffy posts, but uh, it's me, and I can't bear to put out stuff that's boring. So sometimes my uh, when we're doing boring stuff, sometimes I don't post as much. But yeah, when when I see something interesting, I try to share it. So much more valuable than fluff, man. Yeah. Well, cool. And Jared, thank you for you know jumping on here at the last minute. Uh, we'll get you on our our next. Uh, we're calling this the Liberty uh, episode, Liberty series. So we'll get uh, we'll get nice. you on and maybe Paul will jump on with us too. We'll have a good time. Yeah, he was doing a live stream earlier. I let him know that hey, jump on the talking lead thing. And but he was in the middle of a live stream, so I got I got poked and prodded because I bothered him during a live stream. <laughs> 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 All right, lead heads, uh, go and, and support those that support this podcast. Uh, if you don't like my my advertisements that I'm putting in here, you can send me money directly if you want to, but that's what pays the bill, makes it free for you each and every episode. Uh, you can shoot me an email, talkinglet at gmail.com if you want to send me some money. I'm just kidding. Don't do that. <laughs> anyway, I don't always have time to sit here and talk about the products myself personally, which is how I used to do all the, the stuff. But you know, I'll continue to do that. But from time to time, we'll drop a pre-recorded ad in, so just deal with it. So. <laughs> That's all I got to say. Uh, but until then, Leadheads, as always, keep your loved ones close. Keep your firearms closer. And your 1775 closer. And your Constitution closer. And then, of course, James would say. Well, he would he would hem and haw a bunch, and then I'd have to hit him like last week. <laughs> and, and, and then he'd say, uh, live free, but if you must die, die with your boots on. And then LOP would say. Any feed but submission. There you go. That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good... <laughs>